السلام علیکم جی آئی ایم یور انسٹرکٹر فار ہسٹری اینڈ سسٹمز آف سائیکالوجی اینڈ وی آر پریکٹیکلی ان دا مڈل آف دا کورس وی آر ریڈی ٹو ہیو دا ٹوینٹی فورتھ لیکچر ٹوڈے بفور وی گو ان ٹچ اپان سم آف دی ریمیننگ contributors in gestalt school just to jog your memory just to refresh your memory i want you as we have done traditionally to review whatever we had covered in the last lecture chaliye zara zehen mein laiye pichli dafa humne kis school ke bare mein aur us school se mutalliq kin kin logon ke bare mein baat cheet ki thi we were talking about the gestalt school of psychology which was a european and a german school i told you that some psychologists collected around the city of frankfurt and then later on moved to berlin and established their school of psychology which is now called the gestalt school ab wo koi school is tarah ka eent road e patthar ka school nahi tha maktaba e fikr se murad hai hamari jab hum school kehte hain aur unka zyada tar rujhan aur tawajjo jaisa ki aapko yaad aaya hoga wo is baat par thi ke insaan پرسیو کیسے کرتا ہے ادراک انسان کا جو ہے وہ کیا ہے اس کے ایلیمنٹس عناصر کیا ہیں اس کی حیت کیا ہے اور اس ادراک کا انسانی کردار پر انسانی سوچ پر کیا اثر ہے یہ ان لوگوں کی توجہ کا مرکز تھا جو اب ہماری موجودہ تاریخ جو نفسیات کی ہے اس میں جو لوگ گشتال اسکول سے متعلق کہلاتے ہیں یہی ان کا نقطہ نظر تھا گشتال نقطہ نظر سے متعلق ہم نے تین لوگوں کا ذکر کیا تھا پچھلے دو لیکچرز کے دوران اور آپ کو یاد ہوگا ایک بہت اہم پرومیننٹ شخص میکس ورٹ ہائمر اور دوسرے دو جن کا ہم نے ایک لیکچر تھا وہ ولف گینگ کوہلر اینڈ کرٹ کافکا میں نے آپ سے کہا تھا میں فرام ٹائم ٹو ٹائم وقتاً آپ کو کوئز کرتا رہوں گا تو بتائیے میکس ورٹ ہائمر کی کوئی ایک اہم کانٹریبیوشن ذہن میں لائیے یاد آیا آپ کو تین چار چیزیں ہم نے پچھلے سے ذکر کیا تھا میکس ورٹ ہائمر سے متعلق اور پہلی بات ہم نے کہی تھی کہ انہوں نے یہ کہا ڈسکور کیا دی فنومنا آف اپیرنٹ موومنٹ کہ جہاں ہمیں لائٹ میں یا لائن میں موومنٹ دکھائی دے جب کہ موومنٹ دراصل نہ ہو تو اس کو انہوں نے فائیو فنومنا کہا تھا ایک تو یہ بات تھی ان کے سسٹم سے یا ان کی کانٹریبیوشن سے متعلق اور دوسری سب سے اہم بات جو کرٹ ور میکس ورٹ ہائمر کے متعلق تھی وہ تھی ہیز کانٹریبیوشن اباؤٹ ہاؤ ہیومنس پرسیو in patterns in gestalts and he had outlined a number of factors related to perception some objective factors in the stimulus field and some subjective factors within the organism aur teesri cheez max wertheimer se mutalliq jo humne zikr kiya tha wo tha unka concept of creative thinking ya problem solving thinking یا پروڈکٹیو تھنکنگ اور اس ریفرنس میں ہم نے 
یہ دیکھا تھا کہ انہوں نے یہ دیکھا کہ بچے اور بڑے کس طرح سے تخلیقی سوچ جو ہے وہ اپنے آپ میں پیدا کرتے ہیں اور سوچ میں تخلیت تخلیقیت کیا چیز ہے اس سے متعلق ہم نے آپ کو ایک برٹش سائیکولوجسٹ اور ایک امیرکن سائیکولوجسٹ کا بھی ریفرنس دیا تھا برٹش سائیکولوجسٹ ایڈورڈ ڈی بونو اور امیرکن سائیکولوجسٹ چیکس مہائے اور بتایا تھا کہ ان دونوں لوگوں نے اب تک اس پروڈکٹیو یا کریٹیو تھنکنگ یا لیٹرل تھنکنگ جس کو ڈی بونو کہتے ہیں اس پہ بہت کام کیا اور ان کی تحقیقات ریسرچ اب تک جاری ہیں ایک تو یہ ہم نے گسٹال سکول میں میکس ورٹائمر کا ذکر کیا تھا اور یہ ریفرنس دیکھا تھا دوسرا ہم نے ذکر کیا تھا کوہلر کا اور یاد ہوگا آپ کو کہ کوہلر سے متعلق ہم نے کہا تھا ہی ریجیکٹڈ تھارن ڈائکس پوائنٹ آف ویو دیٹ لرننگ ٹیکس پلیس بائی ٹرائل اینڈ ایرر اینڈ ہی شوڈ بائیز ایکسپیریمنٹس آن منکیز دیٹ لرننگ ٹیکس پلیس بائی انسائٹ وین دی آرگنزم گیوز اے نیو ڈائمینشن اے نیو میننگ and creates a new gestalt of the material that is available to him that is a new kind of learning and he called it learning by insight aur humne aapko newton aur archimedes ki misal di thi ke unhone jo discover kiye the physics ke laws wo kohler ki theory mein fit baithte hain aur teesre gestalt psychologist ka jiska humne zikr kiya tha وہ تھے کافکا اور میں نے آپ کو سینسٹائز کیا تھا کہ کافکا کو کافکا کے ساتھ کنفیوز نہ کریں کافکا از اے واز اے ناولسٹ کافکا کے او ڈبل ایف اے ڈبل ایف کے اے از اے گشٹال سائیکولوجسٹ اور اس سے متعلق ہم نے یہ دیکھا تھا دیٹ ہی ڈسٹنگوشڈ بٹوین دی جغرافیکل فیلڈ اینڈ دی فیلڈ آف ایکسپیرینس اینڈ ہی پوائنٹیڈ آؤٹ دی فیکٹ دیٹ وی ریئیکٹ ٹو دی فیلڈ آف ایکسپیرینس رادر دین دی جغرافیکل فیلڈ ایک بات جو میں آپ کو اس کے سلسلے میں اور بھی بتانا چاہوں گا وہ یہ ہے کہ اسی بیسس پہ جو ہماری ماڈرن کلاسیفیکیشن آف مینٹل ڈیزیزز ہے اس میں ایک اہم کلاس کلاس ہے جس کو ہم سومیٹو فارم ڈس آرڈرز کہتے ہیں یہ وہ ڈس آرڈرز ہیں مینٹل ڈیزیز میں جن کا میڈیکل وجود کوئی نہیں ہے یہ وہ ڈس آرڈرز ہیں جن میں ایک شخص ایک مریض سمجھتا ہے کہ وہ بیماری کا شکار ہے اس کے سر میں رسولی ہے یا اس کے پیٹ میں درد ہے یا اس کی آنکھیں جو ہیں وہ کام نہیں کرتی یا اس کے بازو جو ہیں ہاتھ جو ہیں وہ پریلسز کا شکار ہے وہ یہ سمجھتا ہے لیکن اس کا میڈیکل بیسس کوئی نہیں ہے جب اس کے ٹیسٹ کیے جاتے ہیں تو پتا چلتا ہے کہ جو بھی وہ بیماریاں سوچ رہا ہے وہ اس میں نہیں ہیں لیکن پھر بھی وہ دیکھنے سے کاثر ہے یا سننے سے کاثر ہے یا ہاتھ ہلانے سے کاثر ہے آر سم آف دی فارمز آف سومیٹو فارم ڈس آرڈرز اینڈ دس کین بی ایکسپلینڈ ویری ایزیلی ویری کنوینئنٹلی ان دی لائٹ آف دا تھیوری آف فیلڈ آف ایکسپیرینس A patient who suffers from somatoform disorders is reacting to the field of experience rather than the geographical field. So he is a patient when actually there is physically nothing wrong with him. And that is what he had pointed out. What is, that is what Kafka had pointed out that human experience is 
more relevant in terms of experience or experiential dimension rather than geographical dimension. चलिए ये तीन आपने देख लिए और इनका आपने इम्पैक्ट भी देखा साइकोलॉजी पे क्या है एक और बड़ा माहिर नफ्सियात प्रोमिनेंट साइकोलॉजिस्ट दैट बिलोंग टू द स्कूल वॉज कर्ट लेविन इन टूडेज लेक्चर वी विल बिगिन विद टॉकिंग अबाउट कर्ट लेविन एंड हिज थियरी ऑल राइट Kurt Levin was also a German psychologist actually he had studied physics and then he shifted on to the study of psychology and experimentation in psychology he was born in 1890 and he died in 1947 He worked most of the time initially in Germany along with the Gestalt school and the contributors that we just talked about in Berlin until 1932 when he migrated to the United States of America joining the University of Iowa and later on setting up his institute of research called the research center for group dynamics at MIT MIT stands for Massachusetts Institute of MIT stands for Massachusetts Institute of Technology now kurt levin called his theory the field theory जो कि आप अपनी स्क्रीन पे भी देख रहे होंगे और उसने जो हमारी एक्सपीरियंशियल फील्ड है और ज्योग्राफिकल फील्ड है उसको उसने फील्ड कहा है वॉट आई सी अराउंड मी वॉट यू सी अराउंड यू इज ए फील्ड योर रूम योर होम your college school your mahalla your city your country the people in there the things the objects in there all of that is a field the field according to kurt levin has many vectors there are many attractions and there are many repulsions in the field kuch cheeze aapko is hai जो हर शख्स की फील्ड है उसमें कुछ चीजें ऐसी मौजूद हैं जो उस शख्स को अपनी तरफ खींचती हैं और कुछ चीजें ऐसी हैं जो उस शख्स को रिपेल करती हैं अपनी तरफ से उसको दूर भगाती हैं ये बिल्कुल आप ऐसे समझ लीजिए जैसे एक मैग्नेटिक फील्ड है ऑपोजिट्स इन द मैग्नेटिक फील्ड अट्रैक्ट एंड सिमिलर इन द मैग्नेटिक फील्ड रिपेल कर्ट लेवन ने ह्यूमन बिहेवियर को समझने और एक्सप्लेन करने के लिए फील्ड थियरी का कॉन्सेप्ट दिया जिसमें उसने बताया कि फील्ड में कुछ ऐसी चीजें हैं जो हमें अट्रैक्ट कर रही हैं और कुछ ऐसी चीजें हैं जो हमें रिपेल या रिपल्स कर रही हैं इन वजूहात की बिना पर कर्ट लेवन ने कहा दैट ह्यूमन बींग्स develop or suffer from mental conflicts because of the attractions and repulsions because of the negative and positive valence the negative and positive attractions he calls attractions valence because of negative and positive attractions in the field people suffer from mental conflicts and mental conflicts he said can be classified into three categories they impact human beings they influence human beings and they are of three kinds what are those three kinds of mental conflicts according to kurt levin 
And how do they impact us? Let us view that too. The first kind of conflict that Kurt Levin talks about is what he calls the approach approach conflict. Now, you will see on your screen. Approach approach conflict is the first type of conflict. All right, let us have an explanation of what is the approach approach conflict, how this conflict arises, and what is the influence, the impact of this kind, kind of conflict upon a person. The approach approach conflict can be understood by an example. So that you want to go and visit, see a movie. You want to see, you want to buy shoes. You want to buy jewelry. Now, you have money for buying one pair of shoes. But when you go to the market, you see a pair of shoes which is very good, which you like, you are attracted to it. But then you see another pair of shoes which you also like and you are attracted to that too. It happens all the time. You want to buy, you have X amount of money and you want to buy books. You go into the bookshop and you take a look at a book which you like very much and you want to buy that. But then you take a look at the other shelf and you see another book. And you like that book too. You want to buy that book too. If you are not married, you are in the marriageable age, in the marriageable bracket, and you see one person who appears most attractive to you, and then you see another person who appears most attractive to you. But you can buy one pair of shoes but have that much money. And you can buy only one book because you have just that much money. And you can get married to only one person because that's the tradition. What do you do? You end up in an approach, approach, conflict situation. You want to buy a pair of shoes and in order to buy that pair of shoes, you have to have the frustration of not having the other pair of shoes. So this approach, approach, conflict, when two equally attractive goals pull you towards themselves, but you can approach only one goal, you suffer frustration because you cannot approach the other goal. And that is the first kind of conflict that arises from the field as a result of valence, as a result of positive attraction, as a result of your desire to approach two goals, two ends, and you're having to select only one of them. And because you can select only one of them, you suffer the frustration. Aapko mayusi ya khibat ka ehsas hota hai, isliye ke aapko dusra jo goal tha, wo nahi hasil ho saka. So, this is what Kurt Levin says is the first kind of conflict that arises in a person as a result of his being in the field and his being, is his being exposed to two positive valences or two approaches. The second kind of conflict that Kurt Levin talks about. Do you understand the first type? Bring it in your mind again. Revise it in your mind. We will connect it later with a lot of other things. So it's important that you understand it now. The second type of conflict that arises that Kurt Levin points out is what he calls the avoidance conflict. Let's take a look at that by another example. 
the approach avoidance conflict, the second type of conflict, arises because there are two goals in the field. Remember, his is the field of theory. One goal is a positive goal and the other goal is a negative goal. You want to achieve the positive and avoid the negative. Well, it would be very simple. How does that lead to conflict? Very simple. You avoid what is undesirable, what is negative, and you approach what is, po what is positive. But wait, the conflict and resultant frustration arises because you cannot approach without suffering the consequences, the negative consequences of achieving the goal. Let us take a look in the previous example that I gave you to explain how this kind of conflict can lead to frustration. We were talking about two pairs of shoes or two books or two people. Let's take a look at the first example, two books. You want to buy a book that you like, but, you don't, but the book is too expensive. You'll have to borrow money to buy the book. Aapko karz uthana padega. Wo kitab kharidne ke liye. Wo juta kharidne ke liye. Aapko karz uthana padega. Aur aap agle ek ya do maah mein wo karz dene ke kabir ho paayenge. You want to avoid that. But you can't avoid it. Because the book or the pair of shoe is expensive and you need it now. So you have to borrow in order to be able to buy that book, in order, to be, in order to be able to get that pair of shoes, that is, to approach the goal that you want to approach, you cannot avoid the negative aspect related to that goal. That is, borrowing money and coming under the obligation of somebody from whom you borrowed the money. Aapko kisi apni kitab khareedne ke liye approach kiya, approach ka goal mila, lekin uske saath saath, aap kisi ke marhoonen minnat bhi hona pada aapko, kyunke aapko paise udhaar lene pade. Aap marhoonen minnat hona nahi chahte, you want to avoid that, and you want to approach the goal, you want to buy the book or the pair of shoes. But it cannot be done, so you are in an approach avoidance conflict situation. Your positive goal cannot be approached, cannot be reached, unless you also carry the burden of approaching the negative goal which you want to avoid. And that is the other kind of conflict that arises from the field the approach avoidance conflict. Isi ko ek aur misal ke zariye jo tisri cheez ka humne zikr kiya tha usme bhi explain kar lete hain there is a person that you to there is another person that you want to get married to because both these suitors are excellent prospects but both of them one of them lives abroad you don't want to live abroad the other one has parents living in the same house and you don't want to live with the parents in the same house. So the situation in both these prospective spouses has attraction as well as factors that you want to avoid. Hence you are in the middle of an approach avoidance conflict. Hence your inability to avoid frustration. So you are exposed to frustration. So pehla type ka conflict approach approach or dusra type ka conflict approach avoidance. Or tisra type of conflict kya hai? Jo Kurt Levin point out karta hai. That is 
avoidance avoidance conflict avoidance avoidance conflict should be apparently very easy to avoid there are two negative goals out in the field and you want to avoid both so what is wrong with that you avoid both no the conflict arises when you can avoid one only by approaching the other you can avoid a negative goal and that is possible only when you achieve aap bimar pade hain aur bimari se nijat ke liye aapko tika lagwana padta hai kadvi dawai peeni padti hai ऑपरेशन का गले का ऑपरेशन कराना पड़ता है क्योंकि आप खट्टी चीजों का और ठंडी चीजों का इस्तेमाल ज्यादा करते हैं इसलिए आपका गला ज्यादा खराब रहता है और डॉक्टर साहब ने कहा है कि आपका ऑपरेशन होना या आपका टीका लगना आपको टीके लगना बहुत जरूरी है नाउ यू वांट टू अवॉइड गेटिंग सिक एंड यू वॉन्ट ऑल्सो टू अवॉइड गेटिंग एन इंजेक्शन और एन ऑपरेशन in order for you to be able to avoid getting sick you have to have an operation or you have to have an injection which is which is what you want to avoid so you are bang in the middle of an avoidance avoidance conflict when one thing that you want to avoid cannot be avoided unless you approach the other thing that you also want to avoid and this is the third kind of conflict that kurt levin talks about in the field kurt levin says there are many attractions and there are many repulsions there are many things that you want to approach and many things you want you want to avoid and because of the nature of these attractions and repulsions in the field all human beings are faced with mental conflicts of three types approach 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 avoidance and avoidance avoidance conflict notice kurt levin is talking about a whole pattern of the field of environment and the field of environment reacting and the field of environment having an impact on an individual an individual's experiential reaction to it so he is a gestalt psychologist because he is talking of the wholeness and he is also considered a gestalt psychologist because he is talking of the experiential field okay so that is one main contribution of kurt levin in the gestalt school and the other important contribution of kurt levin in the gestalt school is which became the basis of a whole series of research and in fact a beginning of a new chapter a new field in psychology called group dynamics remember he set up his school of group dynamics at mit Massachusetts Institute of Technology All right what is this group dynamics and uh, what is Kurt Levin's contribution to it The university provided him funds and the university provided him space and all other facilities which were conducive for his research in his research in the laboratories of social psychology kurt levin designed many types of experiments and based upon those many types of experiments he came up with what is called the theory his famous theory of leadership 
the famous theory of leadership coming out of his experiments identifies three types of leaders ye aapko yaad hai ke 40s ka zikr ho raha hai 30s aur 40s 1930s aur 40s ka ye maine isliye bataya ke jo 19 aur 1930s aur 40s mein kurt levin ne आयोवा में और एम में यूनिवर्सिटी और मैसाचुसेट्स इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी में जो उसने एक्सपेरिमेंटेशन और ऑब्जर्वेशन के जरिए हम तक बातें पहुंचाई उनका मॉडर्न साइकोलॉजी पे खास तौर पर मॉडर्न सोशल साइकोलॉजी पे खास तौर पर इंडस्ट्रियल साइकोलॉजी पे खास तौर पर ऑर्गेनाइजेशनल साइकोलॉजी पे खास तौर पर ग्रुप डायनेमिक्स पे खास तौर पर स्पोर्ट्स साइकोलॉजी में बहुत गहरा असर है बहुत गहरा असर है उसकी बताई हुई बातें मुख्तलिफ एक्सपेरिमेंट्स के जरिए मुख्तलिफ साइकोलॉजिस्ट ने टेस्ट की हैं और इनको दुरुस्त पाया है इसीलिए उसका यह असर गहरा है चलिए देखते हैं क्या थियरीज क्या थी या उन्होंने क्या देखा ही ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ हिज रिसर्च आइडेंटिफाइड थ्री टाइप्स ऑफ लीडर्स एंड व्हाट आर दो थ्री टाइप्स ऑफ लीडर्स नंबर वन अथॉरिटेरियन लीडर एन अथॉरिटेरियन लीडर इन ए ग्रुप सिचुएशन इज सम directs and controls the group by the force authority of his personality who tells the group members who tells the other people what is to be done how is that to be done who does not invite opinions who does not involve other people in decision making processes related to the group the formation and function of the group but who comes to decisions on his own and almost imposes his decision on the group as a whole and then expects that group to follow the decision that has been given by him and that is one kind of leader that kurt levin identified that operates that functions that originates in a given group the second kind of leadership that he observed in his studies at iowa and he was what he called the democratic leader the democratic leader is somebody who leads the group but leads the group by consensus but leads the group by inviting other people to give their opinions and to join hands with each other and then take the group forward towards the group goal the democratic leader is not somebody who comes to a decision on own and then expects other group members to follow those decisions he is somebody who seeks the opinion of other people who seeks input who is in favor of consensus who makes consultative decisions and the decisions once made are then followed by everybody concerned and this is the second type of leader that kurt levin identified from his at iowa and at mit called the democratic leader and the third type of leader that he identified was what he called the laissez faire leader laissez faire is a french term and it means freedom to do freedom to be so the third kind of leader is a kind of a person who is not authoritarian and not democratic but somewhere in between is he consults but he is a meek or a weak consultative person he is definitely not authoritarian 
but he is more towards democratic but leaves the group an open space provides the group an opportunity to come to a decision which is based upon consensus and consultation and then helps the group to go towards the agreed decision. The third kind of leader then is actually somebody who is slightly above the group members but practically does not provide the strong leadership that the first two group leaders provide. So this is the third type of leadership that Kurt Levin identified. We have seen, I'm, I was telling you that this was in the 1930s and 1940s. Later researches in the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, up to the present time have been able to identify more or less, not identical, but more or less the same leadership styles in organizations, in social groups, wherever people congregate. So Kurt Levin was not too far off when he was working on his theories of group dynamics and when he was observing his styles of leader. Now, this is the other important contribution of Kurt Levin's, that he discovered, apart from the kinds of conflict, the kinds of leaders in a group or a group dynamic situation. What have we talked about Kurt Levin so far? We have talked about Kurt Levin in terms of his contribution to the understanding of the field of experience resulting in three kinds of conflict. And then we talked about Kurt Levin in terms of his explanation and classification of styles of leadership phenomena. Kurt Levin was the fourth important contributor in the Gestalt school. Let us for the time being leave the Gestalt school here and let us go forward and take a look at another European school emerging and that was dynamic psychology. This is in England now. Remember, we were in America during behaviorism, then we moved on to Germany for Gestalt school and now we are into England for taking a look at the dynamic psychology, also called hormic psychology. Aap apni TV screen pe dekh rahe honge? Hormic psychology, H-O-R-M-I-C. Hormic or dynamic psychology. Dynamic psychology ka kya matlab ya hormic psychology ka kya matlab? Dynamic means something which is not static. Jo jandar hai, jisme khud ba khud hil jul ki movement ki kuwat hai. So dynamic psychology is that psychology which assumes that there is a force within people that propels them forward, a force that people are born with. This force has also been called Hormi, H-O-R-M-E. Hormi means 
the vital urge to live, a force that propels people from within. Dynamic psychology has been associated with a British psychologist by the name of William McDougall. William McDougall was born in England in 1871 and he died in 1938. McDougall was at Oxford University and later he migrated to America where he became associated with the Harvard and the Duke Universities. He remained in America, he worked there, and most of the theory that he developed that we today know as hormic or dynamic psychology came out of his research, experimentation, observation at both, in fact at three, Oxford, Harvard, and the Duke Universities. Chaliye, ab hum dekhe ki ye hormic psychology ya dynamic psychology hai kya. McDougall did not reject the value of introspection. He at the same time accepted the behaviorist point of view that psychology should concern itself with observable facts, observation of behavior. But he believed and he said so in so many words that a psychology which is based upon observation of behavior alone is a mechanistic psychology. If psychologists do not take into view what is happening within the organism, the thoughts, the images, the perceptions, the experiences, the emotions, the sentiments, the pushes and pulls, the conflicts, all of these that take place within an individual, if psychology does not take into view these variables, these elements, and if psychology does not include a major method of getting to know these inner experiences, the major method being introspection, then psychology becomes a mechanistic science. So, psychology to McDougall should involve both observation of overt observable behavior and introspection. Okay, based upon his methodology, he put forward the view that behavior or psychology is the result of internal strivings. Animals and human beings have this urge to live. Hormi, H-O-R-M-E, as you are seeing on the screen. This is an internal striving which animals and human beings are born with. And it pushes us, it pushes the animals from within to express themselves to live. It takes a certain shape. What are the various ways in which the Hormi expresses itself? Let us take a look at that too. The ways in which the Hormi or the urge to live expresses itself is called instinct or propensity. Its instinct or propensity is an expression of harmony or the urge to live. 
human beings and animals have many instincts, many propensities, which are really the expression of the urge to live. You understand that the urge to live is a person's desire and these propensities or instincts are his desires. So that is how the urge to live, Hormi, expresses itself. Okay? What are these instincts or propensities? Let us see what are those. You will see on your screen that he prepared a list of 18 instincts or later what he called propensities. You can read them on your screen. I will read them for you also and briefly explain. The first is of course the propensity or instinct for of curiosity. Tejasos. Dusri, sex. Tisri, disgust. Chauthi, propensity of fear. Dar bhi lagta hai. Har jandar ko bhi aur har insaan ko bhi. Food seeking, protection, avoid damage to the organism. Anger, another propensity or instinct. Appeal, another constructive, acquisitive. Cheeze ikathi karne ki propensity. Chuntiyo ko, kiro ko kabi dekha apne. Shahad ki makhiyo ko kabi dekha apne. Insan bhi usi tere se behave karte hain. Bahut si cheeze ikathi karte hain. Laughter, another propensity. We are born with it. Another, comfort, sleep. Migratory, the tendency to move from one place and get relocated at another place. Submissive, another, gregarious. Gregarious means to be social. Another, self-assertive, to try and overpower others. And a list of small ones that he called, connected together, called coughing or sneezing. All of these 18 put together are different propensities and those propensities are really the expression of a person's or an organism or an animal's urge to live. All animals and human beings have this urge to live as expressed in these 18 propensities that, identi that are identified by McDougall. Because McDougall talks of our urges or propensities that propel us, that push us forward, and because he says these are propensities, that express our desire for life. That is why his psychology is called hormic psychology or dynamic psychology. Jaisa ki aapne Kurt Levin ki theories mein dekha that a group when it comes into being, has its own functions to perform. A field has its own dynamism. Similarly, in McDougall's point of view, all organisms, animals and human beings, are dynamic. And that is why his system, McDougall's system, is called dynamic psychology. Before we end today's lecture, let me review for you what we talked about today. We talked about one Gestalt psychologist and the other dynamic psychologist. We talked about Kurt Levin and in reference to Kurt Levin we talked about two things. Number one, 
his theory of or his explanation of how conflicts come about in the mind and his theory of or his explanation of leadership phenomena. The second person that we talked about today was a British psychologist who moved on to America and in his context we talked about two things again. One, that he developed or he postulated that human behavior is a result of inner urge to live, what he called harmi or urge to live. And the second thing that he talked about was how that generalized urge to live expresses itself. And he gave us a list of 18 of those expressions of the drive or the dynamism or the hormic push that propels people forward. That is why he is called a hormic psychologist or his psychology is called a dynamic psychology. We talked about Kurt Levin and William McDougall and do revise these two. Do look up other psychologists, particularly in the Gestalt school and we will talk about some Russian psychologists, some Soviet psychologists in the next lecture. Until that time, Rafis, God be with you.